Hi everyone, Emma here. I'm so excited to show you. Um, I've never made one of these bracelets before, but I have all the components and I actually ordered these crystal rhinestones on purpose for this as well. So um, I'm just noticing that one, the crystal is, uh, it's like a, um, you know what they call it, opaque? That's weird. Okay, so we'll put that one aside. I never even thought to look at these when I got them. I just put them away and forgot all about them. So I, I do have to say, so this is what they look like. They're like a long bar. And they have crystals. There's like a little edge. I'll show you this way. So there's these little edges on each side. And you have a crystal in those edges. And then you have three crystals across here. But if you flip it over, there's nothing on that side. Or that side. Or at the back. So if you're using this in a bracelet... Um, you want to make sure that you get the correct orientation. Um, I'm pretty sure if you're making something with this, because it has three holes for three strands, you're going to be using it this way as well. So it's not like it can flip around, is I guess what I'm getting at. The only way you would end up with this side is if you went to put your bracelet on backwards instead of the right way so anyway that's a little bit of a sidetrack so let's get let's get going let's see what we can make so initially I was gonna do some like frosted metal beads with this mix it in with some pearls mix it in with some crystals and stuff like that and and do it like um, maybe three pearls here or three um, metal ones here and then the next set would be the pearls and the next set would be maybe some spacers and then the next set some crystals now you can do that but when I started looking at my pearls I love doing color combination of pearls and the colors here look really washed out let me see if I turn this off if it changes it it's um my uh, tablet did an update and I'm wondering if it's adjusted the colors so let me see if I can show you a little better so anyway these were the colors I tried to pick a color that would match with the silver and I also have this clasp I think I am going to turn the light back on but turn the lighting down there that's what I need perfect so I wanted to use this class this class is great it's so easy to get on and off this is what it looks like on the back I got these from butterfly beads and actually I have to say I they just finished having a glass bead 50% uh, off sale and they now have a new sale on so definitely check them out they are in Toronto Canada and they're amazing I was just on the phone with the owner yesterday and we talked a lot about what's been going on and stuff and uh, he mentioned that they just received a huge shipment of all new beads like different from what they have normally so um, he says it takes a long time to sort through them and package them and stuff so he's hoping to get those packaged and up on the website soon um, but in the meantime go ahead and take a look it's called butterfly beads and that's where I got these so back to the bracelet here um, I just rather than do straight up white and I think I may end up if this turns out nice I may end up doing a white as well I would like to do 
a gold one, but unfortunately I don't have any golds of these. I might have to take a look and order some, see if they have these in gold. But uh, I think I do have these in gold though. Anyway, another side here. So I decided to pick my favorite colors in colors that would go with silver. And what I came up with, I started out with this set of pearls and this one is called baby pink it is gorgeous it's like a really subtle pink and then i didn't even realize i had these ones are called pale pink and these are all butterfly beads the this is not the price i paid i paid half that so a dollar fifty a strand and here is a strand their strands are big let me see if it says how many beads it does 140 of six millimeters so these are six millimeters that's the other thing that with this design and we'll see when we start adding them let me see if i put three side by side what that's gonna so three will just just fit so that should work so yeah, so I have the baby pink, the pale pink, and then I think this is light lavender, pale lavender. Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. So I don't know, I think I might do, so like I said, instead of doing them stacked, I might do them side by side. So when you wear your bracelet, it looks like this. So I'm trying to decide, should I put should I separate the pinks? Let me see. Actually, no, I think I should try and do it like a, um, I can't remember the word, like shading of colors. So let's do that. Okay, so we have these. Um, I haven't decided how many of these we're going to use yet. This is like totally off the cuff. So th that's these here. I think, I want to think I ordered these from, oh, oh my gosh, look at, I just noticed. There's a two one and there's a three one. So I'm going to have to, um, that's interesting. We could do a two as well with a smaller with a smaller clasp you know what that might with the two where's the see if how this is gonna fit there is two yeah actually the two is kind of nice you could actually do the two with some stretch cord. But then you gotta, that's when you have an issue with the side that doesn't have any. Because with your stretch cord, it turns and flips around and stuff like that. So, um, you know what? Let's save this for another one. So we'll grab our, what I was going to say about these is I, thought that I ordered the reason there was so many of them is I thought I ordered them from the Panda Hall official store but now that I see them being different sizes I'm pretty sure I ordered them just separately if you're interested let me know and I'll try and find them in my um, orders this I would have ordered these probably a year ago so be patient it won't take me a year to find it but i'll find it for you okay so the other thing i have is i have my lovely seven strand beetle on cording so i like to use this instead of say stretch when i'm using a lovely clasp um so I've already gone ahead and I go ahead and cut about 12 to 14 inches and I've added a bead stopper because I thought what I'd do is we would 
line them up and see how they go. So I have three strands because we're going to have three strands attached to the clasp and going through these lovely rhinestones. So let's get started. So this should be fairly easy since we're going to do one color and then another. So let's start with the light color um, for size. Now, I am going to do about a seven to seven and a half inch size. And what I did was I measured one of my bracelets that I know the size of. Um, so it should, and this ends up being like, let me show you, this ends up being about um, an inch extra. So because we have this clasp like that, so we should measure about seven and a half inches and we'll, we'll remember, we'll remove one. Well, well, we'll just keep measuring as we add that. So let's try that. Like I said, this is just kind of a process video. It's not like a tutorial of any sort so um let me try something something fancy i'm gonna measure out let's do six inches of these pearls and then we can add what we need at the end so I will count that for you in case you're trying to do this yourself. There's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, two, four, six, eight, 28. I suspect we'll be adding two to that. So here's the thing is we are not sure how many of these we're going to put on. So I think what we'll do is we'll put some beads on and then we'll add these and then see how it looks. So we're going to start with the first one. We're going to go ahead and I think we'll start with at least four beads to begin with. One. And these um, pearls sometimes are hard to, uh, it's not that they're, hard i have issues with my fingers since i had my surgery i'm still not at the level that i should be maybe i should be doing more beading to get my fingers practiced in the right <laughs> strengthened and whatnot okay so there we have four so yeah actually four looks good because this is going to be next to the clasp I wonder, and of course the class usually sits right here. So if you do this, I think we should do six pearls and then one of these guys. Like that. Something like that. Because you, you probably, yeah, I think six just for the beginning and then we'll do four between each of the others. So let's add two more. And then add one of these. So at this point, this one here doesn't matter where like it, we're going to put it at the bottom. So I guess it does matter. You need to see the crystals at the front if you're doing the bottom. So something like that. Now we'll do fours. And, you know, counting out the beads might help too because then we know when we're getting near the end to adjust how many of those rhinestones we're going to add in and move my sec here so I hope everybody's doing well I know I say that a lot and I know that 
people are having a hard time and I it's so so hard I guess part of why I do this is I want to make sure that I give you an opportunity to have a time that's just fun and silly and you know so that's why I tell you my crazy stories <laughs> And, but I also want to acknowledge that, you know what, we're going through a lot of stuff. And part of that is we go through a lot of stuff in life anyway. But then we go and add things like the pandemic, elections, illness, you know, family issues, medical issues. So, you know, and death. So, if there's stuff you need to talk about, absolutely in the comments, let me know. Or you can e you can email me. Feel free. I um when I go to bed at night, and I usually head to bed like really early, like ten o'clock. That's early for me. But I lay in bed and play with my tablet for a couple of hours. And, oh, I forgot to put another crystal on. So I um, I read my emails. And look, this one's missing a crystal. So make sure you take a look at your... It's not a big deal. You know what? Often I find them in the bottom of the jar and I can put them back in. And, you know, sometimes you can't see them. These are super cheap. I mean, they're not. This is costume jewelry. So, you know, don't freak out if you find that. If, so here's the thing with that. And I, I'm sorry, I keep jumping back and forth. If you do order stuff like this from AliExpress, I will give you a bit of a device that I actually don't take myself. <laughs> So inspect everyone. And the reason I don't is sometimes I forget and other times I'll do an unboxing and then I have it in a bin and then I say, oh, I got to sort this bin and put it away. So I sort them and put them away. It's not until I go to make something like this, I realize there's one that's damaged. So that's why I would recommend that you would um, check them, like inspect them really well. And, uh, I do have a video on how to create a dispute from AliExpress. My best advice is do not contact the seller. Just go directly to the AliExpress dispute, fill everything out that it asks. And in the description, say, you know, describe what the problem is with the item. And then the key word to say or sentence to say is item is unusable. And then it'll ask for a picture or a video. Make sure you put a picture. Now, sometimes the item is missing. So you're like, how do I show a missing item? Well, what I would do is if you ordered other stuff, I show the other stuff. And then I'm like, show my hands or something like that. They have a computer system that checks it. So as long as you add a picture, you can show an empty envelope. You can like anything like that. It, the computer system, as long as there's a picture, it will go through like mine. I did one for, let me show you these guys. There was one of these and I think you guys remember me unboxing it. I had a hard time opening the clasp. Actually, it, it wouldn't open at all. This may be the one. Yeah, wouldn't open at all. So I um, contacted them and or like did a dispute. And it, I did the dispute yesterday. And within an hour, I got my money back for it. So definitely... Um, and by the way, I've already ordered a whole bunch more of these. 
So they're great. I, it was just that one that was the problem. So I want to measure this now because it's starting to look long. And I want to know if I need to add six or uh, it's not even close. So let's keep going. So we add another one of these. So yeah, that was a, just a bit of a side. The thing I was talking about is emailing me. So my email is Emma DeVoe, which is my channel name, at gmail.com. So it's pretty easy to find me. And uh, yeah, feel free. You may, like some people... One person who is so sweet, I won't mention her name. She'll know when I say what I'm going to say. She's like, I know you must get thousands of emails. <laughs> okay, so let me explain. I get emails from Kath, of course, from England. With all the stuff she sends me, we talk every night. Uh, I get emails from Winona, the left-handed beater. She's in uh, Saskatchewan in Canada. So, of course, we talk, and actually, we talk on the phone as well. Um, there's a few other people that email me once in a while. There's one person, and I won't mention her name because I haven't asked her permission, but um, we email every night as well, and we... We do, oh, there's Maria from Spain, of course, um, but we um, we talk about life and all the crap that's going on, and it's so nice to have somebody that understands what you're going through, so definitely, you know, if, and here's the thing, if a bunch of people start emailing me like I'm talking 20 or more I have an idea on doing a private video session where I can talk about stuff and then if I have your email I can include your email and only you will get to view that video so if there's issues you're going through and you email me I can respond to that email with a video and if it's something that other people are dealing with and you want to be a part of that, we can do, it's like a private group email or um, video. So, so there is that option. Okay, so what did we say? We initially measured six inches for the um, pearls, but let's take a look at this. So we still need, and the clasp is not very big so it's about eight inches um so we need seven and a half so let me see here that's about an inch and a half i'm just measuring this six here so if we're so yeah six is what we need so we'll keep going I knew that the number six was in there somewhere <laughs> so let's go this way and see where it takes us so I think we'll do one more of these and then six so make sure everything's in there I am going to adjust this camera because I'm worried that I'm getting out of frame here Okay, so make sure that it's in the right position and just open this up a bit so you can see it a bit better and we may actually have the correct amount of beads I don't know why there's a did we not there's four 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 and six. Oh, that's why because <laughs> I can't count Ugh. I had five instead of six don't tell anybody. I can't count. One. Let me like the count on Sesame Street. 
One pink bead, pink pearl, two <laughs> beautiful pink pearl. Okay, so I have a story for you guys. I auditioned for Sesame Street. <laughs> oh, my life. You know what? If you're to tell people all the stuff I've been through in my life, they tell me I, I'm full of shit. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> it's true. Okay, so this is past the six. But I'm not too concerned. So let me see. Once we add this, that takes us. And I think I'm going to add some small jump rings because I find putting the wire directly on here, they get kind of like stuck in positions. So I like to use the little jump ring. It gives it more wiggle room. Okay, so this would take us to... Let me get that bracelet and see where it. I think we need one more set. I'm going to get my mandrel and double check this because this one here is thick. So, and this is going to be more flat. So this may be long enough. So that's. I'm just going to do this, put this over top, and I'm going to put it at the seven and a quarter and see where that takes me. So then we just have to go like this. And so there, like I said, let me like that. So let's Let's see if we do seven and a half. Let's go to seven and a half. Make sure everything's down there. So there's that. See, here's my concern. If I add four more pearls and one of those rings, it's going to end up being eight. So I think we should stick with this. So, perfect. Okay, so we are, let's get this in the correct position. So now, I'm going to tell you the story of Sesame Street. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing at my own jokes. Just ignore me. <laughs> Okay, so let's get out the ruler and we'll measure out six inches of pearls and that way we'll have an idea of how many we need. So, so I'm French and lived in Toronto. And I don't know how this works. Um, I think... I think the way it works is, yes, Sesame Street it has a, like, is, is filmed in a location, whether it's New York or California or whatever, but I think they do do um, recording elsewhere, and then they, especially voice recording, and then they add it to the... Now, the other thing is, I guess I could count. Duh. 28 beads. Ugh. You'd never know I've been doing this for over a year now. It's 3, 6, 10, 15, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, perfect. Oh, and you know what? These are not the ones I want next. So let's put those aside and get the baby pink. And we get to cut these. Ha <laughs> ha. So we don't need these anymore. Because we're going to use the same one. So, you know, when I bought these, I was um, concerned that 
you would use a lot of them to make bracelets but it just occurred to me now is you're only going to use as many as you have in a row because you have three holes you can you know it's not like you need multiples of three so let me I'm gonna just cut this and count. So let's five, ten, fourteen. I'm gonna put this one aside, it's stuck together. Fifteen. And there's a barrel one here. I don't like those. I mean, I, I use them for other stuff. So let's put that one aside. Take two there. So that's, I think that's 20, five, and eight. We'll know if we need more when we get to the end and there's not enough. So let's start by adding six on here. So yeah, I went to French schools. So we used to go for um, auditions all the time because we were French. So this does not look bright enough. And just bring it up a bit. I think that's why the, um, yeah, I'm going to have to do the settings. That oh, looks pretty good. So three, four, five, six. So yeah, they used to call the school and, um, say who they were and, you know, like Campbell soup. I remember we auditioned for Campbell Soup. So my sister Sylvia auditioned for Campbell Soup and <laughs> she didn't like vegetables. <laughs> Needless to say, she didn't get the commercial because she didn't like <laughs> they were making her eat vegetable soup. So yeah, that was funny. So both Sylvia and I, my sister and I, oh look at that, it's pretty. Oh, this is going to be pretty. Um, got called for an audition for Sesame Street. And the funny part was we were in grade five. And the reason why we would get picked often is the secretary loved us. I don't know. She didn't. She never had kids. She was like super, super nice. If you had a problem, you went to the secretary. She was amazing. And I'm going to say, I think her name was Miss Taggart. She's probably not with us anymore, but she also worked at Simpsons in Toronto. And uh, so we sometimes when we were shopping, we'd see her. But uh, so anyway, she loved us. So... <laughs> If there was an audition, she would put our names down to be called for these auditions. So Sylvia and I were auditioning for um, Sesame Street. And the funny part was, I don't even know, I don't remember how I got there to the audition. I think my mom may have come and picked me up. So I think, like, you would think you'd miss a day of school. And then go directly for your audition. But no, you were at school. And I think my mom came and picked us up and took us. And my mom didn't drive. So we took the streetcar, subway, bus, whatever to get there. This is looking amazing. So um, the reason I say that is we're in grade five. And it was... Um, I think we had to be there for one o'clock. 
So we were eating lunch. So we're all in class eating our lunch and stuff. We didn't have a lunchroom. It's so different. We have grade school from grade, kindergarten to grade eight and, um, and no lunchroom. I think it used, yeah, I don't know why we didn't have a lunchroom, but anyway, so we would eat our lunch at our desk. Anyway, so you were allowed to socialize and get up and walk around and stuff like that. And they had like students from higher grades would come in and um, kind of monitor, make sure nothing's going on. The teacher's room was like down the hall. So if something went down, they were there quick. But anyway, so the reason I mentioned this is one of the toughest kids. Oh, my gosh. He was, he kept saying, are you going to meet Big Bird? Are you going to meet Big Bird? He kept going on. He wanted to know if we were going to meet Big Bird. I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'll get you an autograph from Big Bird. <laughs> it was hilarious. So we went for the audition. And we were so not, like, we weren't, I, you know, the funny thing is, I loved theater arts, and I auditioned for plays and did plays, and I was in a play with Keanu Reeves at our high school, but one, I wasn't very good at it, and I think part of it, I was actually shy when it came to being in public, so, like, stage fright, really bad. And, um, so I was not prepared at all for going for an audition. Well, <laughs> I don't know, I guess as I'm getting to the end, it's, um, going to the edge of the screen. Let me pull this over so you can see what I'm doing. So we get there and, um, there was me, my sister, my mom, and then this lady sitting at her desk. She hands us each a script that's like this thick. <laughs> and she's like, take a look at the script. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm kind of flipping through. I'm like, how come there's no pictures? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is looking amazing. I'm just going to look at the camera to make sure. It looks okay, yeah. It looks very dark to me, but it could be just my lighting right now. So, let's put the third one on. So, here's your third. I don't need the, that right now. And I'm just going to take a look at the time because we need to head out for a swim. So, let's go. Add six. So, um, she says... The character you're playing is a mouse, and here's the line. So go ahead and say the line like you're a mouse. So <laughs> this is embarrassing. So I said, Ouvre la porte. So I had like a squeaky voice, and the sentence was, Ouvre la porte, which means open the door. And the other thing was I was nervous, so I kept laughing. Not to mention it was pretty funny. So, okay, so we got six. We're going to start going through the last hole. Yeah. Can you guess if I got the part or not? <laughs> no. I don't know what they were thinking. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, this is going to be amazing. We're going to be doing some more of these. Yeah, so she was really nice. She, I, I don't remember. I think my sister read it normally, like in her own voice. And uh, so, I mean, you can imagine they must see a lot of people. So... But yeah, that was funny. So the, the funny part was we get back. So needless to say, there was no like Sesame Street stuff going on. It was an office with a desk. 
and a few people. So, and nobody had costumes. There was no fur and feathers. <laughs> we get back to the school, and that really tough kid drove us nuts. Did you see Big Bird? Did you see the, did you see the count? Did you see? I'm like, are you in grade five? Like, really? <laughs> It was too funny. The least one I expected. So I'm trying to think if there was any other auditions that I can remember. We we did get a lot of kids that were actors because they they were French. So and there's a lot going on in Toronto for the film world so oh this is just lovely lovely so we'll have to do some different colors I need to find some uh, gold ones of these let me move this over so I can so you can see what I'm doing three yeah Trying to think some other funny things. So I went, I mentioned this before about going to the all girls school, the private school. And one of the things I used to do, like try to pull pranks on our theater arts teacher. So Definitely for um, April Fools, I would organize a prank to do on the teacher. And um, Mrs. Smith, she was so funny. She was also my English teacher. And because I was into theater arts, now I'm just looking, they're, they're not looking like, see how they're, not fitting. Let me see if I pull them there. They might be slightly too big. Seems to be just this Maybe the holes are not. Oh, I see what's happening is the the pearls want to sit in the in between the other pearls. So we'll see once we get done. Yeah, so April Fools. We had um, a theater arts classroom and basically it was she had a desk. It was all carpeted, and then you had, like, dividers, room dividers, so you could set it up like a scene and then go behind the divider, and then you walk out and start your scene. And then there was a second room that was the costume and prop room. So what we did was we had one of the girls go in the prop room, so when the teacher got there, and of course they take attendance like any other class, and uh, she asked where Lorelai was. And we're like, I think she's in the prop room. I don't think she's, I, I know what it was. It, it was even better than that. She didn't even have to take attendance. One of the girls, it's all girls, right? <laughs> so one of the girls comes running from the prop room into the classroom and says to the teacher, Mrs. Smith, Lorelai's in the prop room. I don't know what's wrong. She's really sick. This is a theater arts teacher. She should know when we're acting. <laughs> She's like, oh, okay, okay, let me, let me go see, right? So, so we're going to create loops and then we'll add our jump rings, I think, so that get our... I'm going to use crimp tubes and let's put three more out for the other side. I'm 
We're going to use small jump rings. I'm wondering if I should put them right away. Yeah, I think I should. So let's put these on. Let's do these ones. They're nice and small. There's four, five, six. So she goes in and she's talking to Lorelai and she's asking her where she hurts and what's going on and stuff like that. <laughs> the funny unexpected part was <laughs> she starts to give her a speech about menstrual cramps <laughs> and Lorelai's like dying trying not to laugh, right? In the meantime, she's trying to keep Mrs. Smith in the um, the room because when you walked into the theater arts classroom, right at the door was the teacher's desk, and on the other side was all those bleachers and stuff, or not bleachers, but dividers, room dividers. So what we did was while she was in with Lorelai is we moved her desk to the other side of the room and took all the dividers and put it to the other side and then we sat down where on the opposite side of the room that we would normally sit down and we were all sitting there quiet and ready right so finally I guess enough time had gone by her and Lorelai come to come into the uh, theater arts classroom and the teacher is like going to go sit at her desk and all of a sudden realize it's not there and she's looking around where's my desk we should have been smart and moved it to another area altogether she grabs her head and she's like oh my god you guys got me again she's like laughing and it was really funny <laughs> and like I said it was so funny because here she is a theater arts teacher she should know when we're acting but she was she was really cool I mentioned that she was my English teacher and she was the first class English was the first class of the day and I was in um, the same classes as my sister we were a year and a half apart but um, I had I didn't fail grade five, but everybody except five kids failed grade five. So I went and talked to the principal and I said, you know, I don't, and I, I mentioned it to my mom. My mom was fine with this. I'm thinking about it now and I'm like, I wish I hadn't done that. But so I went to the principal and I said, you know, all my friends, <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think I did go into the next grade. And because there was only five of us, the teacher didn't teach to us. And the students that were in the higher grade, so they added like the two grades together. The other students were bullying us. So I went to the principal and I said, you know, it makes no sense. I don't know about the other four people, but I want to be with my friends and, you know, like, it's kind of crazy being, this one is, doesn't want to close very well. So, yeah, so in essence, I didn't really fail, but I ended up doing it over. So, which made me in the same class as my sister, Sylvia, which was fine because we were best friends. So when we were in high school, we were in English class together and we sat at the back of the class. <laughs> so that was my strategy. So I, like I said, I was into theater arts, so I would stay up all night watching old movies. And I'm surprised that my mom let me do that. Because, I mean, the TV is in the living room. You could see that. Not like today, you could be watching stuff on your tablet in your bedroom, right? But so, I was half, a, well, I would fall asleep. I'd just put my head on my desk. And I'm going to be careful to make sure I put the correct one on the correct side. So 
oh, we need our crimp tube first. So this crimp tube on there and then go through the jump ring. And I'm just going to bring the crimp tube up and slide the other end of the wire like that. And we're going to bring it up. So probably to about there. And I'm going to take a look and make sure that these wires are separated. They keep wanting to twist here. I am going to try and use my nail to keep it. I don't know if that's. Tighten that a bit. That's better. Okay, uh, let me get my tool. So yeah, I would sit at the back of the class. So we're going to use the end one, which is the largest one. And then we're going to turn it 90 degrees and use this one to fold it over. So let's get that one into position. Use my left hand. Let's see how this goes. Oh. Squeeze gently there, nice little taco, then turn and it should fold over. I am going to switch hands now that that's in the right position. Just want to make sure. Yeah, it's fine. And then turn it 90 degrees and bring it to the last one and fold it over. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to clip this end piece. Right. Let's make sure we don't clip the wrong thing. Like that. Perfect. And I'm going to put a lovely bead cap. So, ooh, I've got these rose ones. I'm going to do them individually. I'll tell you why. Because I think if I waited um, to put them together, it might be harder. But... I, I paused there because I'm thinking they might be too big, but if they're the same as the pearl, it should be fine. So let's get this one all the way to the end here. And I'll tell you why, because the one time I did this, it, um, the crimp cover slid off and then I couldn't get it over the crimp tube so I want to make sure that's nice and snug there so that we can add it to the right spot so put that on so yeah so I used to sit at the back of the class so that the teacher couldn't see me <laughs> I wasn't very smart <laughs> anyway I would sit with my sister and, uh, of course, you know, she was a really good student, so she took notes. <laughs> that would allow me to sleep. <laughs> and, uh, the funny part was at the end of the year, we would get our yearbook and we'd get the teachers to sign them as well. There, let's see if I can just... Kind of close that a bit. There. Oh, it's pretty. Let's see if I could turn that there. Oh, it's doesn't want to turn. There we go. 
Oh, look at that. <gasps> That's gorgeous. Okay, next one. Crimp tube. Yeah, so we go to, um, make sure I got the right color here. The pink, the um, baby pink for the middle. The other one was the light pink. I've got my crimp tube. And now I'm going to put that in here like that. So when I went to get my um, yearbook signed, no, I know what it was. So I got my yearbook signed by Mrs. Smith. But um, Sylvia got her signed. And she's like, oh, you have to read my, what Mrs. Smith wrote in my yearbook. <laughs> she wrote, thanks for keeping your sister awake during English class. <laughs> I'd be asleep. And as the teacher got closer, she, she'd nudge me to wake up. <laughs> okay, so I'm ready to go here, but let me um, see if I can... Get my hands in the right position. I might switch this to this side here. It's a little easier to maneuver. Okay, get there. That's what I want. I'm looking at the other one. There's a little bit more space. Let's try that there. Oh, last one in that last spot. Squeeze and turn into the first one to fold over. Looks kind of weird. Oh, it's. I uh, didn't fold all the way on the other side. Let me see if I can just squeeze this shut. Yeah, that did it. Okay, so let's. I'm just gonna test it to make sure. Just pull it. Everything's. Nothing's coming off. We'll clip that. So yeah, that was funny. She was really um. Okay, we lost something here. The purple ones. Oh, because this was the last one and we didn't put a, a bead cap on it. Or a bead bug. Bead holder. Wire holder. <coughs> one of those words. Two, four, five, six. Let me... This is going to be the next one, but I want to put, I don't know if I have another, I don't know where my bead bugs are. I see one. See, you know what I do is I take them and I use them to hold beads <laughs> and then I put it in a bin like this. I was going to do some earrings and then that happened. So let's um, leave that for now. Hopefully that'll stay in place. So let me just bring them there. Because we still have to do the other side. So they're loose thread. Okay. We need to put this on. So and this is the one I was saying that. Gonna put the bead holder at the end. Okay, so now let's get this right here like that. And I'm just 
Looking at that wire, the wire looks a bit funky. Perfect. Okay, next one. I wonder if one of the beads is slightly larger. It almost now this would look really nice as a necklace too, and you could increase your um your um beads as you go down, which would make it go in a semicircle. Okay, so let's let's see. So we have them all at the position we need, so let's look at that. It should be in here. It's a good thing you guys are paying attention. I heard you saying, Emma, you're in the wrong one. Oh, too much talking, not enough beating. Somebody mentioned, I don't know how you do it. You keep coming back to your stories, you remember. <laughs> That's what happens when you're a gabber. Last one, fold it over, and then the front one, 90 degrees. That one didn't work. I don't know if you could see that. See how it's open? So let's see if we can mash that down a bit. I hope we don't... Oh, look, I just made a mess. Okay, let's see if we can get that folded properly. I'm going to start back here. See if we can get that like that, and then... I find every once in a while the there that one's just gonna no, it's moving. I find every once in a while I get them and they're like okay. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna since it's moving, see if I can get this off. And then we'll put a new one on. Yeah, it's coming off. So it is gonna make the wire a bit curly. I find when you slide that like that, it does that, but no big. So yeah, like that. Just did not close. Okay, get the next one. It's the fault of the tube, crimp tube. <laughs> it's not my fault. C'est pas ma faute. That's what we used to say when we were kids. C'est pas ma faute. Which means it's not my fault. And it's kind of like a whiny kind of... <laughs> I'm sure you heard that in my voice. <laughs> Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is bring this forward like this, and then we will draw this in the other way. So they look like they're separated. And they're not, but you know what? I don't think it's going to matter. As long as it folds properly. Let's see what we got. Yeah, it's not moving. Okay, 
okay so let's cut this length off I apologize you know the I find that the finishing part of a bracelet always takes the longest okay so let's move those guys where's my purples all right okay we put our cap on oh this <laughs> this is lovely okay we put this on that right there yep get these guys forward Oh yeah. Yeah, so it's gonna it's gonna arrange properly. So if you didn't want this wire showing one, you could use um wire guardians as well. But if you didn't want it showing, you could add another um bead cap as well. But the reason I put them is I like this kind of movement on your bracelet, but you know, it might be nice to have something there. The other thing you could do is you could do some beading around your clasp. And I've done that before and it turns out really nice. So let's get these guys. So we will need another bead uh, crimp tube. And we will be done. Let me see. Now I'm going to take the clasp off. Be careful when you're taking the clasp off. So let me just show you that you don't position your clasp on backwards. <laughs> Do you know how I know that? Because <laughs> I've done it. Okay, so here's your clasp. So this is the best way I know how to do it is you take this clasp and you undo it and flip it like of this no that's not what you want to do <laughs> the best way to do it is do this <laughs> okay i mean you're this is going to be your front anyway so you want it this way and then flip it like that right there so let's let's start with the top this time I think we started with the top on the other one anyway so I should have left more length on my wire on the ends get your crimp tube and the top here put that through get our crimp tube fold it over That. Pull it all the way to the size that you want, and about there. Okay. And get your. So let me see if I can position this position it so that my wires are divided this is really okay now I'm gonna just with my tool now that I have the tool in place I'm moving it towards the loop that I want to create so there is a bit of space, but that's fine. The um, 
the crimp cover will cover that. So squeeze and take it. Now that you have it attached, it's not a big deal. Take it to the last one, 90 degrees, and fold over. And that's good. Get some of these lovely. They're rose color, but they, you know, when you take them out, they actually look silver. Let's see if I can get a few that are by themselves. Okay, take this first one and put it on there. And this is a tool that Kath sent me. Works great. Close that a bit more. There. Okay, so remember, this is the top. So now we're going to go for the middle one. Crimp tube. Go through the middle jump ring and fold over your wire go back through your and remember to pull it snug because you want your beads all to be lined up which there there was a bit of space on the purple one but actually just enough to create um be able to bend it in a circle so it's not too bad i'm just gonna bring this down just push everything down like this there so i'm gonna just see if i can do it this way didn't work. Look at the mess it made. And I'm noticing my tools. Let me see if I can fix that without. I had a feeling about this um, crimp tube when I looked at it. It was a bit long and it had a pointed end to it. And I thought I should switch that out. So let's see if we can. So these are crimp tubes that I got from. I don't know why it doesn't want to come off. There. I got from Beetle on. And you know what? They are amazing. They work really well, but there's the odd one that are really funky so can't really see they're super tiny okay next one but there you go lesson learned on that one eh? i should have stuck with my instinct on that this go in here and I am um, I have a swim practice swim um, booked I should check the time shoot I'm gonna have to end this right here so I will finish this up and I will post a picture with it but there you go let's take this off so you can see this lovely bracelet there thoughts 
going to be awesome. Sorry about not finishing it, but actually we have to leave because we're going to miss our swim time. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.